Hello and welcome to this introductory tutorial on working with color in Photoshop. My name is Justin and this video is part of a larger ongoing series on using Photoshop CC. So let's talk about color. So here we are with a JPEG image of my dog Juno. Now this image is actually just light emitting from pixels, okay? So what is a pixel? A pixel is a picture element. In fact, that's actually where the word comes from, okay? Pixel is just a mashup of two words, picture and element, okay? But I mean, what does it really mean? So a pixel is the smallest addressable, controllable element of an image on a screen. What do I mean by that? Well, we can control the brightness and the color of the color channels of a particular addressable element. Addressable meaning it has a specific location, okay? So that is a pixel. To demonstrate this, I'm gonna go ahead and zoom in on Juno, okay? So here we have Juno uh, kicking up some dust here with her big floppy tongue. And as I zoom in on her tongue, you can see the image is getting more and more distorted until we realize it's actually just a bunch of squares of color. Okay, now, these represent pixels. Of course, this is not an actual pixel because this is rather large. This is a representation of a pixel. Photoshop is smart like that. Now, each one of these squares is one solid color, right? Okay, but if we zoom out, we quickly see that those solid colors all come together and they tell your brain that this is Juno, okay? So that's how pixels work. Now, in the mode that we're in right now, let's go ahead and come over here to image mode and look and see that we are in the RGB color mode with eight bits per channel. So let's talk about that. What is RGB? Okay, obviously that's the mode we're in right now. What is RGB? Okay, so RGB stands for red, green, and blue. These three colors are the primary colors of emitted light. Every color we see is made of these colors. When you mix fully saturated versions of these colors, you get white, okay? Now, you might be uh, saying, wait a second, but I thought that when I mix all my paints together, I get black, and this is true, okay? But we're not talking about pigments. We're talking about light, okay? Sunlight, when refracted, makes rainbows. Think about that for a minute. Okay, and when you remove light, what do you get? Black. We see this happen every night, okay? When we add all three primary colors together, we get white. This color model is called the additive color model, okay? This is, um, well, this is different than the subtractive color model that you might be used to from mixing paints together, okay? This is the additive color model. So I'm going to demonstrate the classic example right now, okay? Um, if you Google search RGB color mode or RGB color theory, you're gonna see this exact example, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and hit uh, Command N to create a new Photoshop document. If you don't use quick keys, you can come over here to File, New, okay? Command or Control N, all right? I'm gonna call this RGB. All right, um, let's see here. I have mine set to 1024 by 768. Okay, I just have a web preset right here, okay? Um, and let's see what else here. RGB color, eight bits. All right, and click okay. All right, now I have my background set to black. Okay, now if yours happen to be set to white, all you have to do is come over here, and if you click these two little squares below your two bigger squares, you'll get your default white and black colors. Make sure that black is set to the foreground. Okay, see that? You can toggle them right here with these little arrows in the corner. Black is set to foreground. Select your paint bucket and just click, okay? For example, I'll set white to my foreground and click white. Set black to my foreground, click and black. Okay, so we need to start with that. Okay, so I'm going to come up here and I'm going to select my move tool. And just because I'm gonna need it later, I'm gonna make sure that auto select is checked and that show transform controls is unchecked, okay? We don't need that yet, but we will, so I'm just, you know, getting ready. Okay, now, I'm gonna come over here to window and select info, and up pops my little info palette here, my little info window. The, the colors that we're concerned about, or the values we are concerned about, are right here in this particular corner right here, R, G, and B, okay? 
Now, if I move around with my cursor, um, you can see I'm getting x, y values changing of my positioning, but the r, g, and b is staying at zero. See that? r, g, and b are all at zero. What this means is no red primary color within the RGB color model, right? No green and no blue, okay? We're talking about an additive color model here. And so when you take away the three primary colors that make up all the colors within the uh, additive color model, you get black, okay? So our canvas right now is black. Okay, so let's go ahead and add a little color to this. So what I wanna do is, well, Let's create a new layer. So I'm gonna come over here to create a new layer icon and click create a new layer. I'm gonna double click on that layer and I'm gonna name that red, okay? And now we're gonna create a red circle. The easiest way to create a red circle is just to come over here to the brush and make sure that the brush up here in the settings for the brush is, uh, I'm gonna set mine to around 200 pixels, okay? In size or whatever, 201. And then make sure the hardness is set all the way up to 100, okay? We don't want any feathering with this circle, just a solid, sharp edge circle. Okay, now, um, we need to actually change the color to red. So I'm gonna come over here to my color picker and I'm gonna select it, okay? So let's take a look at the color picker options, okay? now. Here's our info window, and if I uh, move my uh, uh, dropper around on my canvas, we see that we have no red, no green, and no blue, okay? And that's a black canvas. Dealing with the color picker, it is set to black, okay? And here we have a list of uh, letters right here. H, S, and B stands for hue, saturation, and brightness. For now, we are concerned with R, G, and B, red, green, and blue. Notice that they are all set to zero, just like in our info window, okay? Zero, 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 and so we have the uh, color black. As we move this around, you see how everything starts to change over here, okay? Now, I'm gonna set it back to black. Zero, zero, and zero. Okay, let's go ahead and make red. How we make red is I'm going to keep green at zero, blue at zero, and I'm gonna select red, and I'm gonna enter in the number 255, okay? And I'm gonna click okay. Now we have pure red, and I'm just going to click somewhere. Okay, so now I have a red circle. Um, Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and select my move tool again. I can actually move my circle around now. And um, let's look at the info uh, box over here. If I have my cursor over the black, it is zero red, zero green, zero blue. If I go over the red circle, it's 255 red, zero green, and zero blue, okay? Now, why the number 255? Okay, in fact, let's try something here. Let's come over here. Let's try and uh, come over here to the red here delete the 255 and let's enter in 999 and hit okay. And it says an integer between zero and 255 is required, okay? The closest value is inserted. And the closest value that's inserted is 255, okay? Why can't we go over that 255 number? Why is 255 the number that makes pure red in this situation, okay? Well, it actually goes back to our uh, eight bits per channel color mode. So let's talk about that. In the eight bits per channel color mode, we have a value per channel between uh, zero and 255. That gives us 256 uh, different values, okay? We have a range of 256 values per channel, okay? Now in the eight bits per channel model of RGB, each pixel has a channel with eight bits for red, eight bits for green, and eight bits for blue. Okay, so let's go ahead and go back to Juno here. Okay, so we have this image of Juno. Now, all the colors that you see right here, uh, remember we are in the color mode of RGB with eight bits per channel. All the colors that you see are actually combinations of the colors red, green, and blue. Okay, how is this possible? Well, we have um, a combination of multiple shades of that color because each channel al allows us a range of 256 different values, okay? If we had a uh, one bit color, one bit represents two states, okay? One and zero, okay? So one bit equals two, okay? This is true black and white. Let me demonstrate something for you. Okay, so I'm going to come up here now to uh, Image, Adjustments, Threshold. Okay, hit OK. Now, um, 
this is black and white. This is true black and white, okay? We are dealing with one bit here, okay? One bit has two states, okay? And if you notice as I move my uh, cursor around, if I'm over the white, I have full red, full green, and full blue. Pay attention up here. If I move to black, we have no red, no green, and no blue. Okay, again, we're dealing with the additive color model here, where a full combination of my primary colors of red, green, and blue make white. Okay, and an absence of those three primary colors makes black. Okay, so this is true black and white. Okay, this is opposed to what you probably are thinking of as black and white, which is this, but this is actually not black and white. This is grayscale. Okay, grayscale. This is giving us a range of the uh, colors, notice how uh, up here the R, G, and B stay exactly the same, okay? From 0 to 255, it's giving us a range from pure black to pure white, okay? This is called grayscale, and this is what we call black and white in an image, but really it's grayscale, okay? This is actually true black and white, okay? And this is a good example of a one-bit uh, image, okay? one bit color image. Now, why 255? Okay, so in the one bit, we have two states, right? And in this case, we had a pure white and black image of Juno, okay? Moving on from there, we can use the expression of two to the exponent of another value, okay? So the value of two bits is two to the exponent of two, or two times two, which equals four. 4 bits, okay, would be 2 times 2 times 2 times 2, which equals 16. In this case, 4 bits would give us 16 colors. Now, check this out. 8 bits is 2 to the exponent of 8, or 2 times 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 2. That equals 256. There's that magic number right there, okay? So in the 8-bit uh, per channel color mode, we have a value of 0 to 255, giving us a value of 256 for red, for green, and for blue. Let's try mixing these colors together, okay, and see what happens, okay? I'm going to come over here to my circle again, and I'm gonna make two more circles. Let's go ahead and make the green one and the blue one. So I'm gonna come over here and correct create image, or uh, create new layer, sorry. Do that same thing again. I'm gonna go ahead and name this layer here green. All right, I'm gonna come over here and you can probably guess by now how to make green, right? We uh, take away our value here of red. We make uh, 255 for the value of green and keep blue at zero. Click okay and make sure that that's selected, this top layer green right here. Come over here and select my brush. I have the same settings for my brush from before and create another circle. Let's repeat that process again for a blue circle. So I'm gonna come over here, select my uh, color picker, uh, zero green, zero red, and 255 blue, okay? And click, okay. And make sure that this layer is selected and click, okay. Let's select the Move tool. Make sure Auto Select is selected and make sure Transform Controls is still off because it's annoying. Now we can drag these circles around. Now, if we uh, take and make these pixels interact with each other from these three colors, remember we have, uh, if you look over here, full 255 red, we have full 255 green, and full 255 blue. If we overlap them, they don't do anything, okay? And the reason why they don't do anything is because we're dealing with the layer hierarchy here with no blending modes, okay? So let's go ahead and change our blending mode. There's actually a few blending modes that you can do that will create, uh, that will allow the pixel light to mix in an additive way that we would expect when talking about emitted light. The one I'm going to choose is Lighten. Linear Dodge will actually do it in this case too, but I'm going to choose Lighten, okay, for red, Lighten, for green and lighten for blue. Now, let's take the green and bring it over here and mix it with the blue. Okay, see that? We have cyan, okay? So this is our primary color of RGB. Cyan here is a secondary color. Okay, so let's go ahead and take the blue and mix it with the uh, red down here. Okay, and we get magenta, all right? Okay, let's go ahead and mix the red and the green and we get yellow. Okay, so 
you can see now how we can make our uh, primary and secondary colors within RGB color model. Now let's go ahead and mix them all together. Okay. So we have the green, we're going to mix it with the blue. Okay. So check this out right now. Green, watch over here. Full green, so zero red, full green, zero blue. Come over here to the blue, zero red, zero green, full blue. Come to the cyan color, it's zero red, but it's full green and full blue. Okay, this is our secondary color. Okay, and of course the same thing if we make magenta or we make yellow, it's the same exact thing. In fact, let's put them like this and watch the information up here. Okay, so we have full green, full green and blue, full blue, full red and blue, full red. Now, if we mix these three colors together, like so, you can see white in the center, okay? Now, if I hover over the center, notice in my information window over here, we have full 255 of red, of green, and of blue. We have mixed these colors together, okay? Check this out. I'm gonna come down here to my background, okay? I'm gonna select my background layer. I'm going to, uh, select white as my foreground color. I'm going to select my paint bucket and I'm going to change this black background to white. All right. Where'd it go? Right? It seems like our colors have disappeared. Okay. Check it out. I'm going to remove my background. There's my colors. See that? Why have these colors disappeared? The colors have disappeared because white if I hover my cursor over this, is a full value of red, green, and blue. 255, 255, 255, okay? So, this is, blue is 255 of blue, this red is 255 of red, same with green, full 255, we mix these colors together in the middle, white is a full uh, value of red, green, and blue. So if we add white to this, all you're doing is adding a full value of red, green, and blue, to an already full value of red, green, or blue. So they all just become white because in the additive color model, when you mix full values of red, green, and blue together, you get white. Okay, and I'm gonna actually change this back to black, my background here, so you can see my colors again, okay? So each primary color in RGB 8-bit color mode can have a range of values between zero and 255. They can create secondary colors, which are combinations of two values of 255 and zero, or white, which has the value of 255, 255, and 255, or black, which has the value for each channel of zero, zero, and zero. Okay, now, maybe that doesn't sound like a lot. Check this out. When you save a JPEG in Photoshop, you are saving an image where each pixel has a value of between zero and 255 for the channels of red, green, and blue. This is actually 256 times 256 times 256. This equals 16.7 million possible colors. Let's go back to Juno. That's a lot, okay? That's really more colors than we can see at once. So why would we even want 16-bit or 32-bit? Let's talk about that now. In order to demonstrate that, I'm going to create two more Photoshop canvases. So I'm gonna hit Command N. Now, I'm going to change this to 16 bits, okay? And let's go ahead and call this one 16. And we'll call it 16 bits. Okay, so 16 bits. And let's go ahead and create another one. And let's call this one 8 bits. And let's change the color mode to, uh, you guessed it, 8 bits per channel, okay? And hit OK. All right, now, what I want to do is I'm going to create a gradient, okay? So I'm going to come over here and hold down the paint bucket here and so I can select the gradient tool, okay? And I'm going to come up here and make sure that um, the left side here is set to uh, black and the right side is set to white, okay? If you have a different color selected like this, no worries. You can actually just click and drag and these things will just disappear, okay? And you might have grayscale set up up here. Just in case you don't, I'm showing you the manual way to do it. So come over to the left side and click. Come down here and click. And you can just grab this and drag it all the way to the corner. And how do we know we're at pure black? Well, we have no red, no green, and no blue. Okay. Come over here to the red side. Boom. 
going to actually make this pure white by dragging up into the corner. Are we sure it's pure white? Well, we have full red, full green, and full blue. Okay, so now we can make a gradient that is a gradient between pure black and pure white. Okay, I'm gonna make sure that this first uh, linear gradient right here is selected and just draw a line across my, click and drag and draw a line across my canvas. Boom, I made a gradient. Okay, let's hop over here to the 16-bit one and do the same thing. Okay, so I made a gradient. And if you look between 16-bit and 8-bit, they look more or less identical. The only difference you're really going to see is kind of depending on where I, I, I dragged this. Okay, but there you go. So we have two uh, gradients from white to black. One is in 16-bit and one is in 8-bit. Let's check. Image, mode, 16-bits. Come over here to the 8-bit one. Image, mode, 8-bits. Okay. I'm going to switch back to 16-bits, uh, and I'm going to do a few things here. Um, okay. So what I want to do now is I'm actually going to uh, crush the... Uh, range of values between white and black. Okay, because so right now I have this nice range here, well, the different shades of white and black. And I'm going to completely squish those. And I'm going to do the same thing with the 8-bit one. Now how I'm going to do that is I'm going to hit Command L. Now if you don't want to hit Command L, you can come up here to Image, Adjustments, and just hit Levels or Command L. Okay, now I'm going to grab the output level and squish, squish, squish it. All right, right to the center. I'm going to come over here to the other side and grab the whites and squish them too. Okay, just squishing our range. And what do we get? We get a gray right in the middle between them and no more gradient. Okay, I'm going to come over here to 8 bits and I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to hit Command L. I'm going to grab my output level of black and squish that. I'm going to come over here to the output level of white and squish that too. And just kind of squish those in the center like so. Okay, let's go between these two. They look more or less the same. Okay, we have gray. Now, what I'm going to do now is hit Command L again, okay, and I'm on the 16-bit canvas. Got it? I'm going to bring the input levels back in on both sides, okay, and try and get that gradient range back again, like so, and hit OK. Kind of have my gradient back a bit, and that's in 16-bit, okay? I'm going to come over here to the 8-bit to the one. Hit Command L, and I'm going to do the same thing. All right, like so, and like so. All right, and hit OK. Okay, and there's a huge difference here, right? This is called banding, all right? Um, and basically, when we are working with 16 bits, in 16 bits, there's a greater level of flexibility. And why is there a greater level of flexibility? Okay, well, remember how we reached the number 256 in the 8-bit color model, right? 16 bits per channel in RGB. Check this out. In 16 bits per channel per RGB, we get 65,536 shades of red, green, and blue. Okay? So that's 65,536 times 65,536 times 55,536. That equals 281 trillion colors. Why do we need that? Okay, well, as you can see here, when editing, you have a greater range of flexibility in color shades in a higher bit depth. Okay, so editing an image is a lot like editing sound. You can record sounds way higher bit depth than you would eventually bounce out to CD to listen to. But you have a greater flexibility during the editing. It's the same thing for images, okay? so. If you shoot in raw format, you can take advantage of higher bit depth for editing. However, please note that an 8-bit per channel JPEG allows for 16.7 million colors, which is more colors than the human eye can see at once. And for just an image that you're going to be displaying on a screen, it is just fine as it is at 8 bits. However, if you have the ability to shoot in raw, and you're going to be doing edits to these photos. Editing in a higher bit depth will allow you a greater flexibility and therefore a greater forgiveness in your edits, okay, before you start to get what's known as banding of your colors. Okay, now we spent so much time talking about additive color. Let's talk briefly about subtractive color. 
the CMYK, let me show you here, the CMYK uh, color mode here is a subtractive color mode and you'll use that for print, okay? So if you're making something you want to display on a screen, we, um, you wanna be working in RGB. If you're making something you wanna print, then you wanna be working in CMYK, okay? Now, why did I call CMYK a subtractive color model, okay? Check this out. Another way to make color is to absorb some of the frequencies of light and thus remove them from the light combination, okay? Remember, all these uh, colors combined is white, okay? So, we can talk about subtracting frequencies. The absorbed colors are the ones you don't see, okay? You see only the colors that come bouncing back to your eyes, and this is why it's called subtractive color. And it's what happens with paints and dyes, okay? So this is why when you mix all your paints together, you get black. And this is why a lot of times traditional artists are thrown off right away when we talk about the RGB additive color model and we say we take all of our colors, mix them together, and we get white, okay? That's not what we're talking about in the CMYK. That's not what we're talking about in the subtractive color model, okay? So in this model, paint or dye molecules absorb specific frequencies and the rest bounces back, okay, or is reflected. Now, the reflected frequency is what you see as color of any object. For example, the leaves of green plants contain a pigment called chlorophyll, which absorbs the blue and the red of the spectrum and reflects the green. This is why up here in these trees above Juno, why these all appear green, okay? This is also why when poor Juno, or if I wear a black t-shirt, why it's a warmer uh, color clothing to wear than a white t-shirt, because the black t-shirt will actually absorb all of the frequencies, okay? Whereas a white t-shirt will actually be bouncing all of them off, okay? Now when it reflects all of them, it's reflecting every color in the spectrum. Why does the shirt appear white? Because it's reflecting all of the light, every frequency of that light. Okay, just to wrap things up here with Juno, again, this particular image is in RGB color mode with eight bits per channel. Eight bits per channel, meaning that each pixel has a channel for red, a channel for green, and a channel for blue. And in this particular case, we have eight bits per channel. Eight bits allows us a range of from between 0 and 255, giving us 256 possible values, okay? 256 times 256 times 256 gives us 16.7 million possible colors that can be displayed in this particular color model. Okay, thank you.